Welcome to the All Things Fall Protection Podcast, brought to you by Diversified Fall Protection. Fall clearance, deflection, lifelines, rigid rail, all buzzwords that you will hear or already know when discussing a fall protection solution. But what do these all really mean? How do you know what the best plan is for keeping your team safe? With us today, we have Diversified Fall Protection Engineer System Specialist Matt Bittner and Diversified Fall Protection Director of Sales and Marketing, Toby Rosenthal. Matt, Toby, knowing that an engineered fall protection solution can vary, what is the starting point when deciphering what is best for someone's facility? Well, when it comes down to application of what is best for people's facility, when it comes to rigid versus cable, what it really breaks down to is what is your fall clearance. You need to have a good understanding of what the distance is from your walking surface to the next lower obstruction in the event of a fall. And I wish I could sit there and say there's a rule of thumb saying at X feet you've got cable and X feet you can go rigid, but it, there's just too many variables in the real world applications to say that. Clearly, a cable system is going to require a greater amount of fall distance. If you look at it from a systematic standpoint, in the event of a fall, you're going to have a lot of different factors in a cable system that's going to increase your required fall distance. You are going to have deflection in that cable. The cable is going to stretch out and sag. You're going to have the uptake in the harness. You're going to have the amount of deployment of the energy absorption, whether you're using a shock absorbing lanyard or a retractable. Uh, and then you're also going to have the person's body height themselves and what position they are. Are they standing? Are they crouching? Are they laying down? All those different factors can determine what is your total fall clearance. Really the difference when you're looking at it from a mathematical standpoint between cable and rigid, the rigid system eliminates that cable deflection. All the other factors of fall clearance still come into play. So the amount of variables of the length of system, number of users, steel connection, so on and so forth, You've really got to dig deep and understand what the work that is being performed to come up with an ultimate conclusion of can a rigid system do it or can a cable system do it. Yeah, just to tack on to that, more and more we're seeing from clients who come to us with fall protection applications. A lot of them have heard of horizontal lifelines and they know just enough to know that they're not exactly sure if they need that or not. and so. This is where I'll kick off that type of a question. Well, what kind of system do I need for my application? But at the end of the day, Matt's exactly right. Fall clearance distance is really the most important factor when we're starting to make our determination as to what we're going to use. You know, to, to give a real world example, let's say the application is somebody has to get on top of a flatbed semi trailer. Okay, a flatbed semi trailer is only 52 inches off the ground four inches above the general industry OSHA standard. And let's say overhead they do have a horizontal lifeline that they're attached to. Now, again, just thinking through all those different factors that I mentioned before about how much requirement you need of fall clearance, if you just take the pullout of an energy absorbing lanyard or SRL, which is 42 inches, you're already 10 inches away from the ground and you haven't factored in the deflection of the cable, the height of the person, the uptake in the harness. No safety factor. And there's right. no safety factor. So, you know, and, and again, logic dictates and common sense dictates that a cable system would not work in that application. That type of an application would be a rigid system. Now, if you're talking about somebody in an aviation hangar where they're walking the fuselage of a 737 that's 24 feet in the air, you can make the case, yeah, a cable system would work in that situation. Again, 52 inches of fall clearance versus 24 feet of fall clearance. There's a huge gap there. So that's that just kind of gives an example of when a cable system could work and when a cable system definitely could not work. A lot of people also, though, like rigid systems simply from being able to look up there and seeing a big piece of steel, for lack of a better term, and saying, okay, 
I feel a lot more comfortable that that thing can handle if I fall rather than a cable system. Even though the cable system could meet all the applications and work just fine, it's more of a level of, of comfort for somebody saying, all right, looking up there, there's a big trolley beam up there. I know that that can handle my, my situation. Matt, why don't you talk a little bit about rail car applications because those can get tricky too. Sure. So rail car applications, you know, it, it depends on the type of rail car. Again, there are flatbed rail cars. It's same situation as a flatbed truck. It's not going to be able to be feasible using a cable system. However, if you're looking at hopper cars or tanker cars, uh, the average height of those is roughly around 15 foot 6. That does have potential to be used as a cable application, depending on all those different factors that I mentioned. A single user system is going to have less deflection than a two user system that's going to have less deflection than a three user system. So you've got to make sure that you know, again going back to what I said before, you've got to make sure you know what your situation is and what variables you have in your work being performed to determine whether a cable system can be used on a rail car or a rigid system. One of the other things that people probably don't think a lot about when it's cable systems versus rigid systems is end loads. And I won't go too deep in the weeds with this, but cable systems are under tension. Okay, they have to be set at a certain tension or else the cable would just sag and it wouldn't perform properly. In the event of a fall, those two end connections are going to see a lot of load and they're going to want to pull towards each other to dissipate that energy. So you've got to think, okay, my structural steel above that that system is connected to, is it strong enough where it won't twist? in those falls. Is it going to be able to handle those heavy loads coming at sideways impact uh, so you're not doing severe damage to your building steel? A rigid system is nothing but download. There is no tension built into the system. So you've got a much more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a, a better situation potentially for your building steel because it's not going to see those loads in a sideways direction against a truss or a beam or a prefabricated beam, whatever the case may be. Less reinforcement may be required, less tiebacks because the energy is dissipated in a much different, safe, not safer way, but a much different way that could be better for your building. And then uh, one other application that comes to mind is some of the uh, barge applications that we see too. Mm -hmm. And there your fall clearance distance really is a function of is that barge empty or is it full? So an empty barge might be 20 feet, the working surface might be 20 feet above water line and in that case yes you might be able to go ahead and use a horizontal light line system but if that barge is totally full, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so a perfect example we have a client that does have barge fall protection in that type of a situation where when the barge is empty it sits about 19 feet above sea level however when the barge is full it sits only about four or five feet above sea level because it's filled with some heavy duty aggregates um, that type of a situation you know their main concern is they didn't want their people in touching the water no matter what they, they did not want that to happen so that's why in that particular application we went with a rigid system because they had to get on the barge at two different times when they were taking the lids off the barge to fill it up and then when they were putting the lids back on after it was full. So they had a varying range obviously of fall clearances. The rigid system satisfied what they needed in both applications. You know that that one of the questions that gets asked a lot about is, you know, in different environments is one better than the other? Should you use one outside versus the other one? And the answer to that is that the weather really doesn't play a huge factor into that. The reason being is most horizontal lifelines are all composed of stainless steel components. 
So they handle harsh environments fairly well. Uh, your rigid systems most often are going to be a galvanized finish, also very good in corrosive environments. So um, the, the environmental factor between the two doesn't play a huge role. I can understand why people would think that, especially on the coast with all the salt in the air from the oceans. But given the fact that the majority of stuff is either a galvanized finish or a stainless steel finish, corrosion is not too big of a factor. Right. In the client's mind, one other determining factor that, that they have to wrestle with is cost, right? Mm -hmm. And so in some instances, they may, until they understand deflection and fall clearance and all the rest, just say, well, I want this because my perception is that it's a less expensive option than option B. Why don't you walk us through a little bit about the difference in cost, typically, between a lifeline system and let's use a let's use a um, um, an outside uh, rail car application um, to because the cost is going to depend on a lot of things, whether it's inside or outside, right? Yeah, it's tough to sit here and just tell you verbatim or without a doubt a system that is a cable system is going to be less expensive than a rigid system. You, you, I, I couldn't sit here and honestly tell you the truth that that's the case over and over again. It really is a case-by-case -case basis scenario. If you look at it from a turnkey approach, because you might look at a rigid system and say, man, that's a lot of steel. There's no way that that's less expensive than a cable system. But if you look at it from a holistic standpoint, that cable system might have a heck of a lot more design and engineering behind it. That cable system, the components of that cable system may be more expensive than structural steel members. That cable system may take longer to install than a trolley beam system. So it really is, unfortunately, a case-by-case -case basis to sit there and say, one is more or less expensive than the other. There, there is no rule of thumb saying, you know, a, a rigid system is typically X dollars per lineal foot versus a cable system is Y dollars per lineal foot. Too many individual custom variables per location, per the client's need, and per the OSHA requirements to sit there and say one is better than the other right. in that situation. And when we're dealing outside, you have foundation requirements too, which will come into play. Yeah, and, and you know, if you want to talk about foundation work from that standpoint, a cable system is going to have larger foundations than a, uh, a rigid system. Again, going back to because of what I mentioned with those tensions at the end of the system. You don't want whatever freestanding system or columns that you've built, you do not want them to have the ability to twist. So you need to put in, where in a rigid system you put in your standard drilled pier foundations, you need to put in what's called a spread footer foundation, which is basically a giant cube underneath the ground, which hits more surface area underneath the ground and has less of an ability to turn. Where a drilled pier that's round just can spin rather easily. Right. So again, there's a lot of different factors that you got to look in to say, you can't just blanket statement, cable is less than rigid because it's smaller. It just doesn't work that way. At the end of the day, it really does boil down to what the application is and what kind of structure we have to work with. And that's, I suppose, why people turn to companies like DFP in the first place to figure this out. And that's, yeah, that's exactly what I was, you know, I'm glad you said that. That's exactly what I was going to want. And that's why it's so important that when you do need a fall protection system, when you've determined you need something that is, is not off the shelf and is outside of the box, you need to work with a fall protection partner that understands these things. You know, that will take the time to learn what your pain points are, what your situation is, not just saying, here's product A, B, C, go make it work for you. Because 99 times out of 100, it just doesn't work that way. You need to be able to work with a company that will design something that meets the needs that you have. Not only will it meet all the OSHA regulations, but it's going to make the system user-friendly for your people that need to use it. Because let's face it, if it's not user-friendly, they're not going to take the time to use it. When they sit there, a lot of mentality of people is, I've been doing this for 20 years, I've never fallen once, I only have to be up there for 15 minutes. If it takes me a half hour to get things ready just to be able to use it, 
I'm not getting things done, and I'm going to get yelled at for my, by my boss for not being efficient. You've got to design and make these systems so they either do not impede the work or make the work even more efficient. Right. And you need to have a partner that's willing to take the time to learn what you do to make that possible. And in terms of efficiency, I never really understood it until I started thinking more critically about it. But a confident worker who knows that he or she is safe is going to be able to get after whatever it is that they were doing at height in a quicker manner. Yeah, not everybody that works at heights doesn't have a fear of heights. <laughs> so the, the more comfort that you can give them knowing that if something was to happen, they're taken care of, and they're going to be able to go home at the end of the day. They're going to be able to do their work better, more efficiently, and with more confidence. Yeah, absolutely. That's a mantra. Everybody goes home at the end of the day. Thank you both again for your time and knowledge, and thank you all for listening. Remember, if you have any questions regarding any fall protection, go to fallprotect.com or call to speak to one of our fall protection specialists.